So this is a quick video I wanted to get out. So I'm not in my usual spot in Horns High Studios, but I did want to post this in response to the breaking news that came out late yesterday in regard to Brian Koberger's updated alibi. Now, we know that he was required to provide an alibi yesterday, and this came down to the wire. But this could be a reason why Ann Taylor and the defense team appeared to have a little more swagger in that last hearing where Bill Thompson cried over the survey. If that pissed him off, I can't imagine getting this yesterday probably ruined his night, but maybe he took a drive out, you know, in the country to clear his head. I hear people do that sometimes. Now, the big news was that the defense announced that they've secured an expert. Cy Ray, who is a guy with significant law enforcement and military experience. The resume they provided is impressive. His specialty involves interpreting cell phone information. He's providing expert testimony in this case, and he has several times before. According to the court document written by Ann Taylor, they have proof that Brian was not in Moscow in the early morning of November 13th, 2022. And if that's true, then the prosecution could be in serious trouble. The court document mentioned a traffic camera or some sort of camera by a cannabis shop there on the highway that connects Pullman to Moscow. So that appears to be a piece of evidence that the prosecution was going to use to show that his car was driving from Pullman to Moscow at the time that they claimed that he did. So if he was not there, then that's obviously going to be a problem. Now, according to the alibi, Brian spent a lot of time running and hiking in Wawawai Park in Colton, Washington. That's about 15 miles south of Pullman. According to TripAdvisor, that area is a canyon and cell phone service is practically non-existent. So that could certainly explain the fact that his phone was off the grid at the time the prosecution was trying to say the crimes went down. We all know what a big deal they made about that from the beginning, mainstream media as well. I've wondered if he was somewhere where he may have dropped signal. And if he was by this park, then that's very likely. Now, the expert they're using normally testifies in court for the prosecution due to his law enforcement background. So the fact that he's staking his reputation on this alibi makes me think it's legit, and he's going to poke some serious holes in this timeline. Just like everything in this case, you've got a line in the sand where people think on one side that Brian is guilty, the other side that he's innocent, and then you got those of us in the middle that aren't really sure. Well, after this news, I'm definitely leaning a little bit more to the innocent side. Now, the mainstream media are, of course, going to make this alibi seem weak. I saw something that Ashley Banfield was making fun and mocking, referencing that Brian liked to go for drives and look at the stars to relax. The Gonzalez family also released a statement basically saying the same thing. I'm not surprised by either of them making those statements, but honestly, if you were one of these families of the victims, wouldn't you want to know really what happened? I mean, I get that you think Brian Koberger may be guilty, but if something shows that he's not, then wouldn't the main purpose of this be to find out who did this? Why is Brian's alibi any worse than Jack Showalter's five-hour cruise to the hunting cabin or Jack DeCore saying he was asleep? What sort of alibi would most people provide at 4 a.m.? Most of us would say that we're sleeping. At least Brian's alibi will be corroborated by an expert who can apparently pinpoint where he was during the time the crimes occurred. I'd love to see that expert take a look at all the phones of all the people involved in this saga. Let's see where everyone really was that early morning. Let's put all the cell phones in a pile and just let Cy Ray go to town on it 
and we could easily figure out what happened here. What about the victim's phones? Could you imagine what a guy with that kind of expertise could figure out about why this really happened? We could bypass the trial and easily piece this entire thing together by going through everybody's phones. Now, I know that that's not going to happen. I'm sure that most of the phones they were using at the time don't even exist anymore. And some of that data is probably long gone. I'm just saying, wouldn't that be nice? Now, better yet, since Cy Ray has that expertise with crime scene investigation as well, why not let him analyze how law enforcement investigated these crimes? How would Brett Payne in his two years on the Moscow PD, never having been on a murder investigation, stack up against an expert like this? Can you imagine all the crap that this guy would find out? I know that that's also not going to happen, but I would love to see an expert pick these guys apart. Now, speaking of that, I interviewed a law enforcement expert with 15 years of crime scene investigation experience for a new True Crimes Deep Cut episode uh, that's coming out tomorrow, that's Friday, at 1 p.m. Central about the Idaho 4 and the crime scene investigation and DNA. It's going to definitely blow some minds. There was a lot of things we talked about that I didn't know either. So I think you guys are going to want to check that out. Now, those of us who think this alibi is legit, or I'm sorry, those that don't think this alibi is legit and question why it took so long, fail to realize that it's likely that the defense was waiting to get a report from this expert about what I've just mentioned here. I find it amazing that the defense is required to provide things by certain deadlines, but somehow the prosecution doesn't have to do that. Why does it take over a dozen requests for discovery and somehow the judge just seems to be okay with that? It's a complete joke. I'll be doing my first live on this Sunday, April 21st, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central. I'm going to be on with Blogger Girl, and we're going to be talking all Idaho 4, and you can guarantee you that we're going to talk about this alibi stuff. So if you're interested, definitely want to check it out. Love to get some interaction with you guys about this topic and anything Idaho 4 you want to talk about. Well, I got a lot of work I got to get to. You guys know I'm busy, so I'm going to leave this one there. The defense is definitely not in the clear, but this is just another chink in the armor of Bill Thompson. I do think that this is why Ann Taylor had a little more fire in her in that last hearing. I think it's likely they knew this expert was going to testify and what he was going to say, and with those credentials, He's going to be a tough one to discredit, but we'll see how this happens because we know Idaho 4, anything's possible. But let me know down below what you guys think in the comments. Love to hear your thoughts. I want to thank the members of the Horns High Club. You guys are awesome. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate all of you guys that watch these videos with me. And We'll see you next time.